Hello peoples. In this video we will be exploring the accounting equation and working towards understanding how it is critical in every integrated financial statement model that you build. This formula, assets equal to liabilities plus stockholders equity, is possibly the single most important concept in accounting. To get started, let's quickly walk through some definitions. Assets represent all property owned by the company. Liabilities, all debts the company currently has outstanding. An easy example would be a loan from a bank that the company must repay. And stockholders equity represents ownership interests in the company after all debts or liabilities have been repaid. Another way to think about this is that the assets are the resources a company uses to generate revenue. And the liabilities and stockholders equity are the means of owning or acquiring these assets. So let's walk through a quick example. And let's say that you decide to acquire a business for $100 million. And to do this, you raise $50 million of equity and $50 million of debt. And recall that debt is a liability. In this example, we will say that debt has to be amortized or paid off in five years. And to keep things simple, we will keep the business valued at $100 million over this period. So what does the accounting equation look like as you pay down debt? Starting out, you have assets equal to $100 million, liabilities equal to 50, and stockholders' equity also equal to 50. But as you pay down debt, stockholders' equity increases, which as an aside, is pretty much how an LBO model works. Recall that stockholders' equity represents ownership interests after all liabilities have been repaid. And because of that, in the final period, stockholders' equity is equal to assets because all debt has been repaid. So let's go back to the equation. Most companies maintain the accounting equation using a double-entry bookkeeping system to record financial data. Under this system, a change in one account must be matched in another account. These changes are made by debits and credits. And for every entry, the sum of debits must equal the sum of credits. It's important to note that here debit and credit are not defined by their everyday usage. Here debit means left, and credit means right. Whether or not a debit or credit increases an account is indicated by these signs here. And you may have already noticed that on the left-hand side of the equation, a debit increases an account and on the right-hand side of the equation, a credit increases an account. So let's just walk through a quick example where a company intends to raise $5 million by issuing debt. To show that transaction, you would credit liabilities in the amount of $5 million. This reflects the assumption of debt on the balance sheet. You would then debit assets by $5 million to reflect an increase in cash on the balance sheet. This equation can be expanded to show that stockholders' equity is equal to contributed capital plus retained earnings, and that net income is equal to revenues less expenses. We will elaborate on all of these relationships as we explore the financial statements in greater detail. For the time being, it's important to note that the balance sheet is really just a formal presentation of the accounting equation. The three primary components of the balance sheet being assets, liabilities, and stockholders' equity. You will note that here, as well, on a slightly more detailed balance sheet. Once again, you can see assets, liabilities, and stockholders' equity. Finally, it's important to note that in every integrated financial statement model that you build, every accounting period will have a check. On the balance sheet, the check will subtract total assets from total liabilities and stockholders' equity. And so long as this difference is zero, you will know that the accounting equation holds true in your model. So at this point, we're done with the accounting equation, but I want to revisit this transaction in the context of a financial model. One of the things that's very cool about building financial models, and I imagine that depends on your definition of cool, 
but what's cool to me is that if you build a model properly, it will automatically reflect the changes we just discussed. So to run through the example again, let's say that we want to raise cash in the amount of $5 million, and to do that we plan to issue debt. You'll see in the third projected period that we have cash of $6.2 million. So let's go down to our debt schedule, and in the third period, increase debt by $5 million. Notice that when I hit enter, $5 million shows up on your cash flow statement as a cash inflow. And if you scroll up to cash on your balance sheet, you'll notice that cash has gone from $6.2 million to roughly $11 million. So here's what's interesting. It doesn't reflect exactly a $5 million increase. Now why is that? On the cash flow statement, we saw a cash inflow of $5 million. Since the cash flow statement starts with net income, let's go to the income statement to see if we can identify the source of this discrepancy. To identify the difference, we'll select the appropriate period and paste the values to the right. Now let's go back to the debt schedule and reverse the increase. And as I hit enter, you can watch the $5 million cash inflow disappear. Now scroll back up to your income statement and we'll identify what's different. Starting by looking top to bottom, everything looks the same until you get to interest expense, which shows a $200,000 difference and clearly impacts net income below. This difference is due to the additional interest expense due when you raise additional debt. Since it consumes cash, the increase on your balance sheet is not equivalent to the total sum raised. And this is what I really like about financial models. In a properly built financial model, you can take an abstract concept and really visualize it. And much like the example we just walked through, it will also cause you to think about very important items, like how cash actually flows through the three financial statements. And fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how excited you are right now, that's about as cool as it's going to get for this video. All right, that's it for the introduction to the accounting equation. Remember, assets equals liabilities plus stockholders' equity. Debit means left and credit means right. And the balance sheet is just a formal presentation of the accounting equation. And within a few short videos, you'll be building models like the one we just walked through. But for the time being, you're done.